Hey everybody, Robert with RC Archery, and you're watching Tuesday's Tip of the Week number 80. In this week's video series, we're gonna be going over stabilizers. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about picking the right stabilizer links for the riser and the natural balance of the bow. We're also gonna be going over what we're doing with initial weight setup, and then how we're kind of fine tuning that and what we're looking for in stabilizers as well, based off of your shot, whether it's a passive shot or an aggressive shot. In our YouTube shorts that will come out on Wednesday and Thursday, we're gonna be looking into picking short stabilizers versus long stabilizers. So maybe if you're looking at a hunting bow versus a target bow, or looking at wind versus indoor, things like that. And then we're also gonna be talking about why do I have a downward angle on my front bar and what that does. In today's members only video, we're gonna be looking at how I'm setting up the bars on my bow, what I'm looking for, and how I'm using the front weight to counteract what my rear elbow is doing in my shot to help me lock in and stay in the middle. All right, so to start out, let's talk about what we're using stabilizers for. So for one, they are not to mask issues with our bow with how it aims. If we have bad form or if the bow is not set up correctly for us, these stabilizers aren't gonna magically just make you a better archer. What we're using stabilizers for is to help increase the level of hold and the, the stillness that we have in the natural float of what our sight picture is showing us. We're also using them as a weight bias. So when we have a stabilizer, you can hold yours out and kind of play around with this. You can use a broom handle. If I'm holding a stabilizer like it's supposed to be used where the end has the weight on it and I hold that out, it helps naturally decrease some of the movement that I'm using in my hand versus if I were to hold the weight end of this and do those same movements, you can see it's a lot easier to move the bar around. It's the same concept with our bow, and we're actually working this on different axis of the bow. So we have the front and back tilt of the bow with our front rod, and then we have the side to side tilt with this back bar. A lot of people think that these are put on the bow and we're actually using them to balance the bow front and back. That is incorrect. We don't necessarily want the bow to be balanced front to back from a static position. Because when we draw the bow back, we are imparting forces into that bow and generally our knocking point is going to make the bow want to rise up. So where we're pulling from the bow with that D-loop, we'll raise the front of the bow up with this increased pressure if we have a balanced setup at static, so at brace. So we are actually using this front weight to help hold the bow down with the natural forces that we're putting into it as we get to full draw and work through our shot. And then we're using the side rod to actually help us with the cant of the bow. Now some people will use this just to balance out a natural cant of the bow from putting your hand in there and the bow wants to tilt a little bit. What I like to do is actually impart a little bit of counterbalance to where I have some weight to hold against. So I'm using the side rod coming out of the bow in order to help pull the bow down a little bit so I have to then impart and push into the bow to actually level it back up. All right, real quick before we dive into our initial setup, if you are looking for a step-by-step, -step, super detailed version of how to set up stabilizers, how to choose the links, how to base them off of the natural balance of the riser, um, how to fine tune them, all of that. I have a video that I sell. I will put a description in the link below. You can um, email me, you know, let me know that that's something you're interested in. I can help you out with that. Um, today, we're gonna go over the quick, short details and give you the gist of everything so that you can kind of do this on your own. But if you do want that extra guidance, let me know. All right, choosing stabilizer bar links and then also initial weight setup of the bars themselves. So the main guideline that I usually give people on a target setup is you want your front bar to be longer than your draw length. I run a 30 inch front rod, I have a 28 and a half inch draw length. And then the rear bar, generally a lot of people go with a 12 or a 15. 12 is probably most popular. Me personally, I run a 15 inch rear bar because when I started using that, I noticed that my overall movements on targets, my jitters, my bobbles, wind, 
all of that got muted a lot more and it just seemed to help me hold a little steadier. So that was my experiment with this bow and one other and it's worked on both, may not work on each. I would say if you can, test and try out as much as you can. Whether you run a front bar with an extra bracket to run the rear bar off of it or if you're running a rear bar lower down or on the back, test them all out with your riser, your shot style and see what works best. For me personally, I like the offset on the majority of bows that I've shot where this back bar is lower down because it feels like it puts weight on two different planes, a higher and a lower one, and it seems to fight the overall movement a little bit more, and it makes me feel like it's more grounded and um, just overall more stable. I've had bows in the past where that's not the case, so test it out, but for me, and this is what I'm running right now, that's what I like to do. When I'm setting up a bow, and I don't have an idea of what I need to run on stabilizer weights, the first thing I like to do is look at the natural balance of the riser with nothing on it, essentially. If this bow wants to just hold level when I'm not imparting anything on there or if it leans forward a little bit, I'm not going to need as much front weight on that bow. If the bow wants to come back or flip way over like some risers do, I'm going to need more front weight on the bow. So I know that going into it. I don't really like to use ratios. Um, the one to two, the one to three, all that kind of stuff, I think that gets people set up on a false idea of what they need to look at when they're looking at weights. I don't like that personally. If you've never set up long target bars before, they're going to start feeling heavy. It's going to be hard on you to shoot that bow. Start light, and then as your body adapts, just add weight onto it, and look at what your sight picture is doing in order to know what you're doing with the weight adding. General rule of thumb for me when I'm working with people is if my bow is on target and it wants to float out of the top of the dot when I'm at full draw, it needs more front weight. If I notice that I am fighting the bow and it's bouncing up and down, for me, that also is an indicator usually that I need more front weight because what I will do is as I'm holding it full draw, if the bow starts drifting up, I relax on the back end and that lets it come down, but it usually drifts too far, and then it bounces, and I create bobbles. So that is one thing that I'm looking at. On my rear bar, I am using that as an offset to come out away from the bow so that I have to impart a little bit of tension to turn the bow this way to get it level and straight up and down again. I do that because I need a weight bias to fight back and forth and left and right balance to help me hold steadiest on target. Majority of target archers that I've talked to do this as well. Even with V-bar setups, normally the left bar for a right-handed archer on a V-bar is a little bit more weight than the right, but it's not as severe as some people do. So play around with this and see what works best for you. Start with a one-to-one -one ratio on weights, or maybe put you know two ounces on the front or one ounce on the front if you're you know if it feels really heavy, and then maybe put two to four ounces on the back. You can kind of play with that and then just go back and forth. Majority of the time, you're gonna have much more weight on the back bar than the front bar. I don't, but I, it's a combination of this riser and my shot style. So grip pressure also plays a big part in it. If I have a higher wrist grip and I'm pushing the bow more this way, obviously I'm gonna need more back weight. If I have a low wrist grip and I'm pushing more in with the heel, that's gonna kick the bow more this way going to need more front weight so you're just kind of adapting and adjusting but what i will you know kind of put out there for you to look at while you're initially setting things up don't let the bow dictate how you're shooting your shot meaning if the bow wants to lift up out of the top of the dot don't just relax on the back end shoot a normal shot for yourself hold your normal back wall pressure have your normal grip pressure and don't adapt that just start adjusting the weight on the bow and adjusting what you're doing with the stabilizers in order to help that. All right, the last thing that we're gonna go over today is how our shot style affects what we're looking at with stabilizers. If we have a more aggressive shot and we are pulling into the back wall a little bit harder, maybe we're pulling through and increasing that pressure to execute our shot, maybe we're just holding static at full draw, but we actually are holding pretty hard. Target bows, a lot of the times you're holding um, more weight at full draw. You have less let off than a hunting setup. So our shot naturally becomes a little bit more aggressive. Now, 
if you have a passive style of shot, meaning that we're not pulling into the backstops very hard at all. Maybe we're just getting onto the back wall with those stops hitting the cables. Maybe we aren't pulling through the shot and we're just holding there pretty static at full draw. These two styles of shot need a completely different weighting and we're gonna see a completely different reaction when the shot breaks and, and kind of what that bow is doing. For me personally, when I am shooting, I have a very aggressive shot. I pull into the back wall pretty hard and then I increase that pressure a little bit and I have generally more of a, a pronounced follow through and my bow wants to uh, lean forward at, you know, after the shot and it kind of tilts and rolls forward. That tilt and rolled forward that you see is because I'm pulling so hard into the back wall, I need that extra front weight on the bow in order to keep me in the center of the target. Now on the opposite of that, you will see archers sometimes that have more of a passive shot and that bow may tilt back with the top of the bow coming back towards them when they release their arrow. Um, you may just see their arm drop and go straight down, things of that nature. Those archers don't need as much front weight on their bow because they're not pulling against it. So keep in mind when we're setting these bows up and we're fine tuning the weight on the stabilizers and what we're doing with the angle of the back bar up and down and in and out, we are going to have to match that based off what we're seeing and uh, what we're feeling at full draw. Now, I don't ever recommend trying to create a certain uh, follow through motion. But what I will say is that when you have your shot break, whether you're filming yourself or just consciously aware of what's happening after, let it naturally happen to where if your arm stays up and the bow wants to come out and roll or if the arm is dropping or whatever is going on and use that as that indicator of this is the style of shot that I'm shooting, this is what my bow is reacting to with that does it match and that will give you an idea of do I need more or less front weight or more or less back weight and that'll kind of guide you and help you along the way. All right guys, keep an eye out for the YouTube shorts. It'll come out Wednesday and Thursday. If you aren't subscribed to this channel, consider doing so and then also turn the bell notifications on so you get the alerts whenever these videos go live throughout the week. Our members only video today, if you are not a member of the channel and want to see that, down in the description of this video is a link that'll allow you to see the two different plans, what you get with each one, the cost of them, and then it'll also give you a video you can watch as a preview to get a better idea of what you're getting into with that beforehand. If you'd like to be a member of the channel and you have questions, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions about your bow, setup, shooting, getting into target archery, getting into tournaments, anything that you can think of. My email is down below as well. Feel free to reach out to me at any time. Thank you guys for watching this video today. I'll see you soon.